Greetings everyone and welcome back to another video in this little mini series of barcode scanner industrial device things. This is the last one that I've got to show you all, unless you include this, but it's got some slight cosmetic damage, just ever so slightly. And since this is running a very outdated version of Android, it's probably not gonna be that fun to test. So let's focus on something that's gonna be fun to test. Well, I'm hoping it's gonna be fun to test because this device that I'm gonna be taking a look at today in this video, most of you have liked seen out and about on your travels and if you work in retail or something like that the chances are you've probably used one of these devices and that device is the Zebra TC51 they have upgraded them over the last few years but for me personally like when I go into Kmart Woolworths and all that sort of stuff I see these exact same barcode scanners being used so that means they must be really damn good to be used in big name businesses like that but before I jump into looking at the Zebra TC51K just let you all know now that the timestamps are in the description as well as the pinned comment so you can skip along to wherever you like. This should also be integrated into the video so you can just go along to wherever you would like to if you need to skip past the listing because we're going to be briefly taking a look at some of the listings that I found online for this thing. So yeah if you need to use those timestamps to skip through certain bits that's completely fine and also if you need to use adblock, ublock, revanced or whatever it is on mobile feel free to do that as well. Completely fine if there's more ads than what I put in there. YouTube likes to do that so completely fine by me if you need to do so. Well the Zebra TC51 goes for $1,445 US dollars on Amazon, and there's only nine left in stock, so you better order now. This is the exact unit I have. That price really doesn't mean too much, because you can purchase it from an Australian website for 2379 Australian dollars, which is even better. But if you go to Google and you just type in Zebra TC51 and go to shopping, you'll actually find that there's one in cash converters, which is completely fair I guess and by the looks of it that is one that does not have Google Play services man I have a big story to tell you all about this device so uh, buckle up but otherwise someone's asking $840 Australian for one on eBay 621 and 895 refurbished aside from the unit being expensive the accessories themselves are expensive this is a five slot charging cradle for these for 832 Australian dollars yes that's that's correct a charger for $832. You can probably find it cheaper, but this was the first one that popped up. And I suppose everyone wants to know where exactly I got my units from. I got both of mine from eWaste, of course, for $10 each. Don't worry, I'll start explaining it all because now we've got to go through the specifications. Now, both devices I have are not phones. They are just Wi-Fi only. There's no actual physical SIM slots in both of these devices, which is a bit unfortunate. Would have liked to have used this as a phone, but I really can't complain with the price that I've paid for them. In the specifications list, we have the dimension dimensions, which it is a bit of a thick device, especially when you have the exoskeleton on it. That is what it's called. It's 249 grams with the battery. It's got a five inch 720p display, which is exceptionally bright, outdoor viewable, optically bonded to touch panel and 600 nits. And I can say the display is actually quite good on this thing. I mean, for the price, it has to be somewhat decent. The screen is also protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 5. It has a 4,300 milliamp hour battery in it with fast USB charging of 500 milliamps. It's not very fast at all. Actually, to be honest these charge quite fast from my testing experience anyways the nano sim slot is only on the tc56 i've got the tc51 we've got wi-fi multicolor leds vibration motor on-screen keypad two microphones with noise cancellation bluetooth push to talk support programmable back button dual dedicated scan buttons dedicated push to talk button the processor is the snapdragon 650 which is a hexacore processor with an adreno 510 gpu in it the operating system is android 8.1 oreo however you can choose to have Android 6 Marshmallow, Android 7 Nougat, or Android 8.1 Oreo on this thing. I'll talk about that soon. The memory is either 2 gig RAM and 16 gig flash, or 4 gig RAM and 32 gig flash. My units are both 4 gig and 32 gig, so someone paid the extra pretty penny for the optional ones. We have the working environments. So it can work in freezing cold temperatures and pretty hot temperatures, and it can be thrown around and run over by trucks and all that sort of thing. Well, probably not run over by trucks, but you know what I mean. It is IP67 and IP65 certified. It even lists the vibration motor as well, which, okay, I guess we'll take a look at it. It's also got thermal shock as well and electrostatic discharge. I mean, this is definitely an industrial device, so it has to comply with a lot of standards. It's got a light sensor, a motion sensor, proximity sensor. The scanner is an SE4710 imager with 1D and 2D with extraordinary range. The scan range is actually quite good on this thing because I've tested it and yeah, it's definitely something. We've got a rear 13 megapixel camera with autofocus and built-in flash. We have NFC, which I thought it said Felicia just there. 
I was going to say bye, Felicia. And then for Wi-Fi, we have everything listed here for Wi-Fi, data rates, operating channels, security encryption, certificates, and fast roam. There's a lot going on with this device that most of you are just going to breeze over. And I'm breezing over it too, because there is a lot of stuff that these things are certified for and have in their features. This isn't just a normal Android device. This is something else. Okay, so that's all the listings that I found online and all the specifications about this device. Snapdragon 650, 4 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, 4,000. 300mAh battery, 5-inch 720p display to sum it down very quickly. So I guess let's take a look at the Zebra TC51. Here is one, and here is number two. I have the exoskeleton for this one, but I've taken it off just so I can show you around the unit a lot better. And if you didn't see in the summary video where I quickly showed these, now's your time to go, ah, yes, I've seen these before. These, as I said, they're pretty much in every store in Australia that I've been to, like Kmart, Woolworths, Coles, they all use these things. Another quick thing also, I'm not doing drop tests or durability tests on these because these things are used worldwide and it's proof that these things will survive basically anything so I'm not even going to go to a durability test. I'll just say they will be fine. But all is not what it seems on these devices because it's time for S'mores to tell you all a story. So please sit back and relax. If you don't want to hear this story, feel free to skip to this timestamp on screen. I'll just give you a moment to collect your bearings. Okie dokie. All right. Ready to go? Okay. I picked both of these up from eWaste. 10 bucks each. I seen them and I knew that they were expensive units. So I immediately grabbed them, picked them up, and then I got home. And I went, how does one charge these? So that's when I looked up a charging dock for this and found out that just one charging dock was about $200 or something. And so I've just went, nope, that's not happening. And I threw these in my suitcase of parts to basically sit there and rot and do nothing. Then one day out of the blue, I'm talking to a couple of good friends of mine and I mentioned, hey, I've got these Zebra TC51 units. And they're like, oh yeah, they're pretty expensive things. They're quite good for what they are. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I have two of them and I can't charge them. And one of my good friends, 12 over 12 or essentially, tells me something that made me almost fall off my chair. And I'm going to test to see if you folks out there know this. So this charging port at the bottom, did you know that you can grab a screwdriver, stick it in there and pull this up to reveal a type C port? I had literally no idea that was the case. And if you didn't know that, now you do. So if you work in a business where you're using these, don't be tempted to pull off the bottom cover and reveal that USB port. But basically, yeah, this is just um, the pins connecting to a USB Type-C port, and then that goes in there, and that's how that works. And that's also sealed up. It's got a gasket around it. But I had no idea that that was there. No clue whatsoever. But then here comes the next problem. I powered them both up, and both are locked to a business. I know which business they did belong to. So I wanted to wipe these completely clean and start from scratch. However, you cannot factory reset these with the enterprise stuff on there for obvious reasons, for security, you know, for employees that have these, they can't just reset it and then take off with this device if they want to. That's why these things are very, very locked down. The Summy V2 was pretty locked down, but not as locked down as these things. So as I said with the operating systems, you can get these in Android 6, 7, and 8. Both of these were running Android 7 when I got them, but now one of them runs Android 8.1, which I'll talk about soon. One of my good friends and also one of the moderators of this channel, Pegex Sparkle says to me, don't worry, I will look something up and I will find out how to factory reset these things. Next moment, he says, I've got a script file. All you got to do is put it on the micro SD card, boot into recovery, flash it, and it will reset it. So I did that. I loaded up my micro SD card with these files on there. And sure enough, both of them were completely wiped and ready to go. And I've just went, okay, well, that was easy. So if you do happen to stumble across these devices, legally, if you purchase them somewhere and they are locked to a company, you can go to this FTP, which I will link in the description, but use it your own risk because those files will wipe these units the tc51 they call it something else as well the mc33 i think then there's also an os upgrade which upgrades them from 7.1 to oreo which i've done so yep that exists and it was like almost a year ago that i used the scripts on these to make them completely unrelated to any business stuff or anything then when i started doing these barcode scan reviews both of these units did not have any google play services on them and i really wanted google play on them so i went to zebra website and looked at the instructions there and unfortunately for downloading Android 8.1 just the firmware it's restricted so you can't download it so that's a no-no but if you just go to the FTP and just download and just do some good old flashing and stuff then that's perfectly fine so we went to that FTP a year ago for the reset script and then I've only just recently been back there for the firmware so it's an open invitation if you have one of these feel free to go there and um, you'll be able to use these things instead of them being completely
complete bricks. With that story out of the way, that gives you a rough idea of the journey that I've been on with these devices. This one is running Android 7.1 and has no Google Play services. This one is running Android 8.1 and has Google Play services. And this is the one I'll be using for majority of this video. I felt so stupid because if you look on this one, you can actually see that I tried breaking into it, but I couldn't do it for some particular reason. I got a screwdriver and went to town on it. Couldn't do it. And then, yeah, I was told, no, you just... just I hope you've all learned something today. All right, so let's go around the unit without the exoskeleton on. And this thing is basically what's going to protect it from all the drops and stuff. And if you can see all the scuff marks around this one, it's been dropped quite a few times, probably too many to count. So once you take that off, you can finally take a look at this unit. So at the top, we have the Zebra branding and we have an earpiece up there. I'm pretty sure there's an earpiece in there for the whole push to talk thing, but we'll take a look when I tear it down. You got these little areas for the notification LEDs. They come up in different colors. Then you have a little light sensor just there if you can see that then we have these two little areas just on the bezels to indicate where the barcode scanner buttons are at the bottom we have another speaker grill then around the unit we have a programmable side key one of the barcode scanning buttons some grooves for optional modules which there's a whole bunch available for these the obvious port which i'm not going to go there again another barcode scanning button volume buttons then at the top we have a power button the scanner that's in there which is a little bit more sophisticated than the center one that i recently had a look at then we also have have a little door for a headphone jack and that has a big beefy gasket around it too to prevent water from getting in. Then on the back, we have our rear LED flash, which is bright. I've seen some bright LEDs before, but they're always the ridiculous things like on the DJ 1000. This is just genuinely a bright LED. 13 megapixel rear camera, another shortcut key for barcode scanning. Then we have the back, which has the little zebra branding and NFC there. Now, if I just pinch the sides, I can pop open the back cover, which has the battery attached to it. Now I know that I got these e-waste, but that's a big risk buying stuff for e-waste because I'm never sure where it comes from. So just for my own personal sake, I'm not going to be showing any of the serial numbers on this device. But the battery is right here and it's the 4,300 milliamp hour one. And just inside of the unit is a little door to reveal the micro SD card slot and the place for the nano SIM. But unfortunately, this one doesn't have nano SIM support. But I've got a 32 gig micro SD card loaded in there. So that is all good to go. And this micro SD card slot door has a gasket around it. And that just slots back in and it's all good to go. Let's leave this one to the side because I want to show you the difference between one with Google Play services and one without Google Play services because there's quite a difference in apps. So let's go ahead and power this bad boy on. It does a little vibration. I gotta say, these things have been on a very long journey with not knowing the whole USB C thing and then uh, finally flashing them with a reset script and then upgrading the operating systems. So it is the TC51 touch computer. Boop. And this is factory reset, but I'm not going to show you setup because it'll take too much time. And. Here we go, battery's low, 12% remaining. We're not gonna be on this for too long. This is what it looks like. So the default apps on this with no Google Play services are Active Edge, App Gallery, Battery Manager, Battery Swap, Bluetooth Pairing, I'd say that would be Bluetooth Pairing, Calculator, Calendar, Camera, Chromium, Clock, Contacts, Data Wedge, Device Central, Diagnostic Tools, Downloads, DW Demo, which I'm pretty sure that's on my other one, Email, File Browser, Gallery, License Manager, and I've just realized how bright the display is, you probably can't see anything. Yeah, this License Manager, that is the whole enterprise thing. So basically, when a business gets these, they use that, to set it all up and have all of the enterprise stuff on there. Music notes, phone, which you can use phone, but how does one do that without a SIM card? Oh, you could probably phone over Wi-Fi. That's probably why. Push Talk Express, RX Logger, RX Logger Utilities, Search Settings, Scan Demo, Sound Recorder, Stage Now, TC51 User Guide, and Worry Free Wi-Fi. Just to also show you as well, this is the one on 7.1.2 with the security patch level of June 1st, 2019, the kernel version, build fingerprint, and build number just there. And if I also swipe down for notification, we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, battery, invert colors, do not disturb, airplane mode, auto rotate, flashlight, and cast. And that is pretty much it for that one. I'd go through the app list on this, but I think you get a good idea of the main apps on here, which also reminds me I'm not dumping the system files from these devices because there's nothing really interesting on them. That's this one. So let's switch this one off and go to our main unit. All right, I'm powering on the one with Android 8.1. Basically all the same startup. Nothing's really changed too much in terms of boot up. TC51 touch computer, touch computer. And that's it, we boot it up, swipe up, and we're in. Now, these are purely 
stock. Yes, there are some small little tweaks from Zebra because of the whole industrial enterprise thing about this device. Apart from those things and some of the apps, this thing is completely stock. So there won't be too much to check for the operating system. I might open a quick shortcut maker just to see if there's anything, you know, sort of hidden, but let's finally start this review off because it's just been a rambling chaotic mess so far. This is what it looks like. If I swipe down, it says SMS is no longer supported. To read and send SMS messages, please download Android messages. Will do. Uh, as you can see, this has been slightly changed because we're now on Oreo. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, do not disturb, flashlight, auto-rotate, battery saver, cast in airplane mode. Just let me show you how bright this flash is. Ready, set, there you go. I could stand near the Froggos and see the lemon tree with this. It doesn't seem that bright, but trust me, it's bright. Just if you didn't get the notification, it's bright. I can also add location, invert colors, data saver, nightlight, and nearby share if I wanted to, but I'll just leave that. The brightness is all the way up as well. I might just sort of put it down a little bit, but like if we go up close to the display, it's pretty good. While I've been using this and testing this and stuff, the display has been pretty good for a 720p display. I thought this was honestly a 1080p display at first, but nope, it's 720p. So if I swipe up, I've got Active Edge, Battery Manager, Battery Swap, Bluetooth Pairing, Calculator, Calendar, Camera, Chrome, Clock, Contacts, Data Wedge, Device Central, Device Info Hardware, which you'll see that I've put my own apps on here already, Google Drive, DW Demo, Email, Files, Geekbench 5, Genshin Impact, Gmail, Google, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, Hangouts, Keep Notes, License Manager, Maps, Phone, Photos, Play Movies, Play Music, Play Store, Store, Push Talk Express, Quick Shortcut Maker, RX Logger, RX Logger Utilities, Settings, Simul Scan Demo, Sound Recorder, Stage Now, Stock and Inventory, System Info, TC51 User Guide, Worry Free Wi Fi, YouTube, and Zebra Bluetooth. I will be opening up quite a lot of these applications just to see what they do because I honestly haven't opened up many of these since I've owned these devices. I've only just logged into my Google account, put stuff from the Play Store onto this device, had a bit of a play around with it. I've done the camera test already, so it's all going to be a bit of an experience for me as well. So I'll just start on the main screen. So I'll touch and hold. We've got wallpapers, widgets, and home settings. Home settings, we can do not too much there. We'll go to the wallpapers on this, which is just one. Thought there might have been more. Since the enterprise app will be mostly taking over and we'll have the business's brand on there, there's no need for a lot of wallpapers, I guess. I'll jump straight into settings, which we've got network and internet, 2.4 gigahertz as well as 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Ethernet, if you have the optional little dongle, you can have Ethernet, data usage, hotspot and tethering, VPN and airplane mode. Connected devices, Bluetooth, cast, NFC, Android beam printing, and nearby share, no surprise. NFCs. Perfect. Well, like, even though this thing is made completely out of plastic and just with a glass front, it is completely rock solid, especially with this thing on. I can't express that enough how hefty these things are. Like, I feel that you could just throw this over a bridge onto a freeway and then go pick it up and it'll be fine. You folks will have to let me know if you use this device and if you've dropped it and broken it. Because I want to keep my units in good condition, I don't want to drop them or anything and then break the screen. But it would be interesting to know if someone out there has dropped one and broken the screen. But I don't think that's going to happen because it's just it's a hefty chunk apps and notifications we can see all of the applications and show systems so i'll just scroll through this which we have advanced with an f fair enough or your easter egg so like most of these should be just stock qualcomm sort of stuff uh, which you can see there but there is some custom things done by zebra or symbol um, as that's their name symbol zebra motorola no, this has nothing to do with Motorola. They used to have something to do with Motorola, I think. I'm rambling. I should shut up because I don't know what I'm talking about. Dark. Uh, device info hardware. Yep, all good. Elements. That's disabled. That might do something. Enterprise keyboard. Oh, fancy. Event ejection service. Okay. Yep. Geekbench. Genshin Impact. Yes, we're going to be playing Genshin Impact on this. And San Andreas on this, which is something you'll likely never see again, but sure. It's happening today. NFC manager. Phone services are here, so yeah, you probably just phone over Wi-Fi or something. QMMI, no idea what you are, but sure. RX Logger, security stuff. There's just security stuff everywhere on this thing. Because once you set this up for a business and have all the security settings on here, good luck trying to steal one of these and try to mad hacks your way through it like I did. Except I bought mine from eWaste. I have a receipt from eWaste, okay? YouTube, Zebra Services, Zebra Setup Wizard, Zebra Volume, why is there volume control? Okay, fair enough. Well, that's all of applications and then notifications, app permissions and advanced. Don't really need to go through there. Actually, is the volume different? No, the volume, oh, the volume actually looks different. Battery says one hour and 43 minutes left. 
I can say these devices likely were used quite a lot, so the battery is not quite as efficient as it should be. Like when I was installing Genshin Impact, I think I left it for about half an hour and I think it dropped about 45%, roughly. The batteries have definitely degraded over time. Maybe the other unit's better, I'm not too sure, but just from my experience anyways, likely in a business, just dock the thing, charge it, then use it again, off you go. Plus, uh, you wouldn't be really doing gaming on the job, whereas I was doing gaming on this thing. It's fine, this review is not going to make any sense, but that's okay. Brightness levels at 71% because yeah, if I bump it up all the way, it, it's just extremely bright. I've got to say, it is a nice display. We've got no live wallpapers, I just checked. Display size, ambient display, when device is on external power, touch panel mode. Oh yeah, you can have um, glove and finger, stylus and finger, glove and finger, stylus and finger. So wait, can I just use the Apple Pencil? No. Okay, it has to be obviously a uh, proper stylus. This is not charged, by the way. In sounds, we have zebra volume controls, which... Oh, that's their zebra volume control thing. The scanner volume there, too. Okay, I should show you the scanner, too. Advanced uh, notification sound is pixie dust, and got all those on as well. Not too much there. Storage. I have 38.19 gig used of 64 gig. You may be thinking to yourself, what, how, why, why have you done this, Smalls? Now, this device, completely factory reset, ready to go with just my Gmail on. Downloading Genshin Impact, it threw up an error and said, no, nope, you don't have enough storage. And I went, well, there goes testing Genshin Impact, until I worked out that I could put an SD card in it and expand the storage that way. And that's how I've done it and now I've got 28.5 gig used of 32 gig. So Genshin, San Andreas, and basically all the other apps are on the SD card, not the internal storage. So if there is some slowdown during Genshin and San Andreas, it's probably due to the slow SD card that I've put in there. But that's the only way I could get around doing the whole Genshin Impact test. Because like what I did with the Sunmi V2, I had to delete basically everything off the device, do the gaming test, then put everything back on and continue with the review. And because Genshin takes so long to download and install and all that sort of stuff, I just rather to be on here and work my way around it. It's fine. I've got it all working. We should be good. Key programmer. You can set all the buttons if you want. So you can map button L2 to be, well, you can have it to open up anything you want, really. Let's just do settings, for example. So if I press this, yep. I don't remember what it was at, but I can change it to anything. Ah, yes, demo stuff. But yeah, you can program the keys if you want to. So you've got the two on the side, one on the back, and then that one there as well. So you've got four customizable keys. But if I open up the scanning app and I turn this off, so unlike the center one where it sort of scans like this, this one is just sort of fixed with the little laser doing its thing there. And this is also very, very bright too, and can reach barcodes quite far away. Uh, for example, that's a box over the other side of the room. It works. Now, I did say in the center review that I'd likely use one of those as my stock and inventory thing, but I honestly could use one of these because it's type C. But the battery doesn't last as long. That's got like, what, 9,000 milliamp hours in it? I'll think about it. So yeah, that's key programmer. Security and location. You can have swipe, pattern pin, password for the screen lock, no fingerprint or anything like that here because it doesn't really need it, to be honest. Wake up sources. So if you press these buttons, it'll wake the device up, I assume anyways. Users and accounts. I've already got my Gmail on here. Accessibility. You do have talkback and you do have a couple of services here as well. I mean, it is helpful to have this stuff on these devices, but I don't think they're particularly catered for in needing accessibility since these devices are just made for scanning and quickly doing things and stuff. So I don't know, you'll have to let me know if people actually use TalkBack on these devices or not, like in a business setting. Google, we don't really have to go into. Zebra is the data services. So help Zebra improve its products. Nope. Location data is off. An administrator has configured this device to collect location data as part of device data from the following sources, GPS, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. So you would be tracked pretty easy if you did steal one of these devices and then connected it to Wi-Fi they'd instantly know where you are. It honestly is very risky having these devices, but since I've done what I've done to them and I can use them completely fine, then there's no worries. In system, we have languages and input, which is just Gboard. There was the whole enterprise keyboard. Oh, that's standard Gboard there. Oh, there we go, enterprise keyboard. Let's put this on. Note after a reboot, this app can't start until you unlock your phone. Well, let's just see what happens. Date and time backup, system updates. I'm up to Android 8.1 and there's all the build details and enrollment status is not enrolled. So if it says enrolled, then that's it. It is locked to a build. Business. And if I press the settings cog, that's as far as I'm going to get. I don't know if anyone's actually hacked these and made like custom ROMs for these, but feel free to let me know if anyone has. In about phone, we have the model TC510K, Android 8.1, which is Oreo. So let's test our little friend. There he is. Wee! A little laggy. The performance of this could also be a little bit slower than usual due to all the apps I've put on here as well. 
So just keep that in mind. But performance wise, just by using this normally and like camera test and putting all the apps on stuff, it's fairly fast and snappy. I mean, it's got a Snapdragon in it, so that explains it all. Android security patch level is November 5th, 2020. A couple of years behind, but I guess businesses have upgraded, so that's not really an issue to me anyways. Kernel version there as well, build fingerprint and build number. I might just put the animations down, why not? In software components, we have audio, acoustics profile, top microphone seal, MX, hardware ID, NFC, scanner, touch, build date, device update version, and baseline. There you go. Battery information here as well, which is 87%. Oh, the battery scale 100. Does that mean battery health or what does that mean? No, there we go. There's the battery health. So battery health percentage is at 100%, but it's at 80% decommission threshold. And the total charge is that. Battery time since first use 350 days. That's a lot. That's only a year actually. That's not a lot then. So now I've put the animations down to 0.5 and yeah, it's a lot more snappier now, but I'm going to reset this thing because of the whole enterprise keyboard that did come up. I want to see what it looks like. Also, another quick story time with this one too. Uh, this one was also locked to a company, same company as this one. And because this is running Android 4, when it boots up, it takes a while to load the actual business application. And I was able to go straight into settings, disable it. And then I was able to just use this completely fine. And then I was able to factory reset it within settings and then it didn't come up again. So that was easy. The world of mad hacks. Your life's not complete without some mad hacks in it. So enterprise keyboard looks like, oh, now that's fancy. Yes, I have seen that on people that have used this in stores. I have seen that and there's a the little barcode. Yep. You press that and barcode scanner buddy comes up. So that's actually very, very helpful. Can I move that around? I can. Yes, I can. Okay. But yeah, that's the enterprise keyboard, which is basically just Gboard, but it's all blue and I like it. Makes it more uh, sophisticated. Oh, now the barcode scanner is just permanently on the screen. I'll change it back because that might interrupt us during how do I get rid of that then? Okay. I had to switch the enterprise thing off because the little barcode shortcut would be on the screen the whole time and it just might annoy some people. So I'll leave that. All right. So now I think we should start going through the applications. Obviously I'll leave gaming and stuff till the end. So if you need to use the timestamps to skip through that, that's fine. But let's go with Active Edge, which Active Edge is the whole barcode thing, I believe. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. So this is just another shortcut menu because I was using this to activate the barcode scanner because when I exit this, I can't barcode scan. So that's what that's used for. Battery manager, 85%, time until empty, four hours and 27 minutes. Advanced info, that's all the advanced info that we've already seen. Battery health is good and we have a wear level. So I should check that on the other battery to see what that comes up with. Very helpful to have this on there though, because it helps with businesses. If they're using this thing, they can just see the battery manager and go, oh yeah, we need a new battery, which will cost you $400. So yeah, battery swap is here as well, um, which activates the admin app will allow the app battery swap to perform the following operations, lock the screen. So I don't know how this would work because you pull this battery out, the device switches off. So that's an external battery pack perhaps. Let's just leave that because I don't know what that's going to do. Bluetooth pairing utility just shows a little barcode to help you pair with this device. Calculator, stock, rad, cool. Calendar, Google Calendar. Camera, we're at the camera with the flash on as well. Yeah, it's, it's bright. So if I go to the camera app, it looks very much like the one that was on the center. So we have some scene modes, which I didn't use. I just put HDR on manually. No fancy stuff. Does have autofocus, which is good and manual focus. Going into settings, we've got flash, picture size, 13 megapixels, picture quality is at high, storage is set to phone. And we do have some little settings for the ISO and exposure. Then if we go to video, flash is on or torch, switch that off. Video quality is 1080p. Video duration, you can't set to no limit. It's 30 minutes. So you can only do 30 minute video with this. Storage is foreign, white balance, and also a panorama mode within here as well. So I'll splice in the photos and videos that I took with the Zebra TC51 device. It's not a very long segment, but have a look at the photos and videos and see what you think of them from this device.
testing video quality on the Zebra TC51. I've already forgotten the model name of it, don't worry, it's fine. Uh, this is what video looks like. I did see autofocus kick in, yep, that's definitely working. And touching the screen just takes a photo, so no manual focus. But it seems to be doing the job so far. Getting nice and close to the flowers. There you go. Perfect. Well, I mean, it should look good. Three Muppets looking beautiful, as they always do. He's losing more paint. I this yellow flower that had a bee on it that doesn't have a bee on it now. Bolts right there. More bolts. These two cheeky fellas. There you go. Main magpie. Cat of the cat. Grass that needs cutting. Or weeds or whatever. The lemon tree. Lemon. And a lot of wind. Once again, mini lemons. There you go. Zinni's looking fabulous, and shiny, and detailed, as he does. Cool. Now there was two burbs sitting up there, but they're now gone. So a eight times digital zoom into the faraway aircon reveals that we can see a breeze there. I touched the screen to manual focus and it took another photo. But yeah, it does work. Nice. I mean, it's fairly basic within the camera settings, but it seems to be taking good photos and videos for the most part. So yeah, see how it goes during the nighttime. Ripley. Yeah, see, you know your name. Ripley. Don't fall. Your little toes can't hold on. So you fell. Mm hmm. Wow. You little possum. Testing nighttime mode with the Zebra TC51. This LED is bright. You can see the lemon tree from the Froggos. It is extremely bright. So this is honestly probably one of the brightest LEDs on a phone I've seen. Apart from those ridiculous ones, like on the DJ1000 and stuff. But this is bright. Um, and it's too bright. <laughs> I can't autofocus on the front rows because it's just white. But yeah, it's really good. Got a good shot of a lemon tree and yeah, not bad at all. I mean, well, it's a bit sort of left to be desired its current state and if i touch the screen it just takes a photo you can see the lemon tree that's just amazing all the way from here my neighbors are probably thinking what the hell am i doing um well doing a camera test for all the folks that want to see this so yeah there you go you can see any he needs to have like little minions or something this is yeah fairly impressive Really, really impressive. Look, you can see the froggos even from here. So yeah, not bad for nighttime on this. We're back. You've seen all the photos and videos that I took with this device. Camera's good. That LED is just too bright. That It helps way too much with nighttime shots, but this camera feels like a flagship camera back in sort of, you know, 2017 sort of thing. Like I won't put it on par with anything, but it does honestly take some really good shots. Like just look at the detail in Zenny there. That is pretty good from this. You can even see he's got cobwebs on him. Oh, whoops. I was pleasantly surprised with the photos, how they turned out. Look at this. Just good really really good and video wise was also pretty exceptional as well i did try open camera as well to see if i could push 60 fps but i could not push 60 fps from this it was just stuck at 1080p 30 fps bit unfortunate with that one there's also those burbs that were sitting on the roof just chilling that i got a photo of so enjoy the burbs there they are there just chilling just going hey what the hell's he doing i don't know what is he doing taking photos of his backyard well, he's an idiot. Probably. That would be a typical burb conversation, I'd say. So out of all of the industrial devices, I did like the whole 60 FPS thing on the center one, but this takes the win, I think. Because the photos and videos are just really, really good for this device. So well done to you, Zebra. So anyways, moving on, we've got Chrome, which here we go, Chrome. And if I type in Zebra DC51, see someone's selling it on eBay for $280, $1,948 from some website, 329 used on eBay, 840 It's just silly but yeah if i go onto the website yeah loads fast a chat with sales yeah i've got a uh, tc51 device and um i think i mad hacked it a little bit too much so uh yeah there is a new mobile computer available with more enhanced features so yeah that's what they've upgraded to and it looks the same kind of as this but businesses use these units still beautifully designed for work but cool enough for play with the contemporary design and the modern convenience of a smartphone it has integrated features and the rugged design your business requires backed by the zebra ecosystem powerful performance super efficient hex core processor that it does next evolution enterprise touch computing 
Engineering, Industry Use, Retail, Manufacturing, and Warehouse Management. And then some specs there as well, and how this thing is pretty good. And it's a pretty good device. I can't say anything bad about this thing. It's perfectly fine within a business setting. It's just the battery in this I'm sort of questioning still. But anywho, yeah, browsing is fine on this, not a problem. I mean, you've got the four gigs of RAM in this unit, so as well as the Snapdragon, so that does help you out. I won't spend too much time on Chrome, but obviously it'll be completely fine if your business allows you to jump into Chrome and quickly Google something, it'll be perfectly fine for it. I've got to show you the notification LEDs as well. That so far has showed me green, orange, and red. I'm not sure if the middle one works. Clock is clock, context is context, data wedge is another barcode scanner, which, We've got profile zero as default and a whole bunch of settings. You've got a lot of settings here. Center didn't have these settings, so this scan is more sophisticated. I won't stuff around too much with the enterprise apps. Who knows what I do to this thing? Well, if I do anything, I can just reflush it, so it's fine. Device central uh, requires Bluetooth turned on. Please enable Bluetooth and restart device control. So this would be where if you're in a business, then you'd have all your devices sitting together using Bluetooth and off you go. Device for hardware, I guess we may as well check the specs right now because we already know what's in this thing. But yeah, 720p display, Android 8.1, 4 gig DDR3, Snapdragon 650, Hexacore, TC51, Oreo, 720p display, 60 hertz, 295 pixels per inch, and I believe this has a 10-point multi-touch? No, it's only 5-point. Thought it might have been 10. Memory, 4 gig LPDDR3 and 32 gigs of internal storage, 13 megapixel rear camera, and it doesn't show the camera in the scanner. Once again, I used open camera to see if I could trigger that, but that's not the case. Battery is 84%. Health is good in here as well, so it's good. Thermal, 32 degrees, 40 degrees on the main sensors there. It's getting quite warm because, you know, I'm obviously holding it and doing whatever, but we'll have to see how hot it gets during the gaming test. Sensors, accelerometer, light, proximity, and a gyroscope, and that's basically it for there. I'll just double check the other one real quickly since we're just checking the specs and just making sure everything's fine, but Zebra Technologies, that's them. MSM 8952, 32 gig, 4 gig, 4.7 inches. It's 5 inches, but that's okay. Battery, what do you say? That's fine. Thermal's good. Sensors are all good there too. Jeez, there is a lot of sensors in there. Sophisticated camera, then it just broke. We know the specs anyway, so I don't need to spend too much time on that. DW demo, another shortcut for that. Oh yeah, and then you can select all the uh, little scanners that you can do. Ah, so you can swap from the actual scanner itself to the actual camera scanner. That makes sense. I definitely feel these would be better for stock and inventory, that's for sure. But I like the grip on the other ones though. Files, which is just standard Google files, not much to see in there. Geekbench 5 will come back too. Same with Genshin, Gmail, Google, San Andreas come back too. Hangouts, keep notes. License Manager. There are presently no products entitled with Zebra Technologies Corporation on this device, but you can do that if you wanted to. You'd have to have a license and lots of money to do this and I don't want to do that. Maps, phone, photos, play movies, play music, which is discontinued, but should still work. I take that back. Okay, no, it still works. Well, I guess we should do the speaker test then. Let's see how loud our Zebra is. Also, you might be thinking this has dual stereo speakers. Not the case. The earpiece does not double as a secondary one, so it's only the bottom loudspeaker that works, but it's pretty loud. <laughs> That's loud. That's loud. And I also have a headache while filming this review and that just intensified that even more. Uh, if you bump the volume down though, that's a nice speaker. All the way up, it's super loud. It loses a little bit of the quality uh, due to BFG Division being very noisy and oh, I shouldn't yell. Okay. Uh, no, it's a good speaker. The secondary speaker at the top does not double as secondary speaker. I wonder how big the speaker is in this thing then. I wonder if it'll be a big speaker. But yeah, it got to like 106 or 107, probably more on that. I don't know why I still keep using that for. It's just tradition. Okay, moving on. Play Music, Play Store. Don't really need to go into the Play Store since I've got everything. Push to Talk Express, which it requires a license. Well, I guess we're not going too far with that then. Quick Shortcut Maker. I guess we'll go through the normal apps and then maybe go to Quick Shortcut Maker. RX Logger, which I suppose that would be a logging thing for what this device does during the day, I suppose. 
about? Uh, yes, most likely, that's an assumption. RX logger utility, all stuff that would be configured and used in a industry setting. Settings we've been through, single scan demo, which, oh, here we go. Okay, the evolution of enterprise data retrieval. How to use this demo, start, start single scan. Place document for scanning. Scan my Charizard. Oh, searching for postal. Oh, that's probably why it's not going to work then. I thought you'd scan the document and be able to tell me the uh, text on there. Oh, see, you can have your own image. Ah, so this would be helpful if I was to use this for my stock and inventory. I could have my Smalls logo there and the header color. And I could, yes, yes, I could. I could do many things with this. I'm going to use this as my stock and inventory device, except that's demo though. To be fairly honest, I have no idea what I'm doing. So I guess I'll just leave it. A sound recorder looks, record your message. Okay. Uh, stage now, barcode staging, scan a barcode to get started. NFC and local file staging. Stage now is waiting for input from any of the staging methods below. All right, well, uh, well, yep, barcode works. Okay, cool. Uh, invalid barcode scan. Please verify barcode scan and try again. Well, in that case, if we've got a stock and inventory, once again, I'll leave this app in the description below if you want to download this and use it on your own device, but it is a really helpful app and I swear by it. So we create something. Let's just say I want to do inventory for this terrible little Motorola. And I call this Motorola to V5 something or other, V171. And then barcode, I just go boop. That's not the one. That's the one. That's too much. I only just want the IMEI. Yep, there we go. There's the IMEI. You can just say working, one of them, take a photo of it. Yep. Do your photo. Okay, granted, that's not the best, but sure, why not? That's fine. And then you can crop it and done. There you go. That's it. So that's what I would do for inventory because standard cameras don't really pick up all the barcodes like Sony Ericsson's and Motorola's sometimes can be really iffy with their barcodes. So with this, at least I know now that I can do that. Also, someone has chewed the antenna on this thing like a lot. That's ew. You're from e-waste too. The wonderful world of e-waste. Place where I've got so many cool devices that I've showed to you all. CPU system info we've been through. TC51 user guide, which is exactly what it's going to be. The user guide for Android 8.1 Oreo. So how to use this? Yep, 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 understand, yes, good, um, this is probably like 57 pages worth, yeah, probably. One is the front camera, optional, okay, fair enough, so that doesn't exist. Three is the data capture LED, indicates data capture status, then seven is the charging notification LED, okay, so that sensor in the middle is data capture LED. And then, yeah, for the connector, do not remove the interface, ensure proper device sealing. Yeah, I wish I would have known that when I first got it, but anyway. Uh, but yeah, it was manual there, and you can go, wee. There's the LEDs there, okay, yeah, so um, red, orange, and green. It's the colors it does. Worry-free Wi-Fi displays all my Wi-Fi settings and information and all that sort of stuff, so won't go there. Then Zebra Bluetooth, or Zebra Bluetooth, doesn't matter. Select trace level, and finally, we're at the YouTube test, which I got to update, which I will. I know this review is kind of all over the place, and I'm not testing as much as I should be testing, but I think you all kind of get the idea of these devices anyways. I mean, the enterprise stuff, I'm pretty sure most of you can sort of put two and two together, but regardless, hopefully, there's that ad again that came up. What is this? Oh, Bigo Light live stream. Okay, so it's for a, um, yeah, let's not go there. Okay, let's do the YouTube test. Oh, I can do 4K 60 FPS. There's no way that's 4K 60 FPS. Hang on. No, that's 4K 60 FPS. I mean, 4K on a uh, 720p display. Oh, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hold up. That's 4K 60 FPS. Not a problem. Looks good. Looks really good. As I said, 4K on a 720p device, um, obviously, uh, you know, it's not full potential, but um, at least it works fine, smooth, buttery smooth, not a problem. I mean, from the specs anyways, we knew that was going to be fine, but worth testing it, because if I didn't test it, then I wouldn't have known. And all the apps in the background too. Getting there. Getting there. Dump da dump da dum. Bop, 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 bop. There we go. Okay, so we've now reached the end of the app list. But I'm going to open Quick Shortcut Maker just to see if there's anything within here worth playing with. So, advanced settings. Did this come up before? No, but you can select Wi Fi frequency bands and. Ooh. Well, they are advanced settings then. I'm going to put the Enterprise keyboard back on after this review, that's for sure. Uh, Fusion Logger shows logs for this device. Yeah, see, all of those Google Play services are not on the other one. QMMI is Snapdragon stuff. There you go. Testing menu. That's 
fine. RX logger, SVI settings is not the core common thing. Yeah, pretty much everything I've already looked through in the apps list is all here. There's nothing that's sort of hidden away except for some testing stuff. So that's all good in that regards. Now let's open up Geekbench and let's see what score we get for a device like this. Has anyone ran Geekbench or Genshin Impact on one of these devices? I've got no idea, but let's go ahead and do that and we'll just wait and see if it works. Should work. Okay, and it's done. We have 279 for the single core score and 721 for the multi-core score. So I'll display some other scores from previous devices, like the Soap R11 got 113 for the single and 520 for the multi, but that had a Snapdragon 430 in it. The multi is kind of on par with the Unisoc Tiger T310. I don't think I've ever tested a device with a Snapdragon 650 in it. I think that done fairly well for this device anyways. I mean, imagine if they put MediaTek in this. That wouldn't have been a fun time at all for any business. That is Geekbench, so numbers aren't everything. So let me now push this device to its limits and do the gaming test on this thing. How would games run on this device that is clearly not meant to be running games, but we'll see how they go anyways. Let's start off with San Andreas. Bump everything up to the maximum. I have a feeling this will be perfectly fine, but let's just see. Yeah, see, no dual speakers, just one. Just one, but it does perform well. And it is a little bit laggy so far, but that's okay. Let's get on the bike. It feels so weird playing games on a device that's just not meant to game. Doing a mad wheelie. Let's see if I make the jump. Nope, not going to make the jump now. Whee! That's pretty good. All right, well, let's get a car. Let's steal the red van. Yeah, that's some style right there. Like, it's not 60 FPS but it's pretty close to it. I reckon if I put the shadows down, let's put the shadows down ever so slowly. I reckon that'll be perfect. There, just a classic. Yeah, that, that's done. Not bad at all. Come on, Van, you can do it. The vibration motor isn't working, but it definitely does work. It's just not working within games. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. If you somehow manage to get San Andreas working and you want to play it on the job, you absolutely can. You'll have no issues with it. Just bump the shadows down and uh, you'll have no issues. But okay. Oh, hello. Did you did you see that? Did you see did you see some graphical glitches there? Well, it's not getting hot, not overheating. Let me check device info hardware and see what the thermals are. 58 degrees on one of the sensors, but it's cooling down quite considerably. Genshin Impact is now the true test, isn't it? How does Genshin Impact run on a barcode scanner? Well, we've got to just wait for it to load, and this does take quite a bit because it's loading from the SD card, and I didn't use the fastest SD card in this thing. It's all set on the lowest settings as well, but I'll see what happens if we push it to the max to see what it looks like. And we're in. So if I just kind of uh, move the camera around. It's still loading the assets in, but once it's loaded everything though, give or take the performance may be a little bit iffy because of the micro SD card being as slow as it is. But you know what? It's playable. Oh, where's the enemy? Where's the oh, there they are. I'll see what the graphic settings are, um, are at at the moment. Let me just... There we go. Oh, he's still not dead. Oh, no, he's dead. So let's check the settings and go to graphics. The graphics are at the lowest. Crowd density is set to high. Let's try to make it sort of a little bit more optimal. So I've just turned some of the settings down. See if that makes a bit of a difference. Not really. Okay, why not? Let's just bump it all up to the maximum then. The good news, it looks nice. The bad news is... Um, yeah, that's obviously what would happen if you put it on the max settings. Okay, once it gets going, it still looks nice. It still very much looks nice. Definitely want to play Genshin on some slightly lower settings. I would have loved to have seen Genshin work on the uh, center PDAs and with the whole pistol grip thing, because that would have 9,000 milliamp hours of battery life, but you're limited with the whole RAM and uh, all that sort of thing. But this works fine. It's playable if you don't mind it being a little bit slow. If someone wants to casually play Genshin on one of these devices, which is highly unlikely, then you absolutely can. Glad I was able to demonstrate that for you all. Let me just check the thermal. 60 degrees on the processor. Whew. But 
In saying that though, it's warm, I'll say that, but it's not hot. I'd say the cooling in this is pretty good. We'll have to see when we tear it down, which we're almost at. Because that is pretty much all of the applications and stuff that I wanted to check on this. Granted, I didn't open everything up and show exactly what it does, like the license management and all that sort of thing. But I think you get the rough idea of what this thing is meant to be used for, what settings it's meant to be in, and not in the hands of some idiot online showcasing gaming and stuff on this device in a one hour plus review. That's for sure. So from my perspective, Perspective. $10 for each of these devices, winner. In businesses though, well, from what I've seen anyways in businesses with people using these and obviously having no problems with them, I would say these are bulletproof. Tell you what, conclusion wise, I will leave it as it's a pretty good unit for what it is. But I'll let you folks that use these devices on a daily basis in you know retail industries and stuff, you let me know how you think of these devices, if they're good, how the battery lasts, all that sort of stuff, because I'd like to hear from you because out of all of the devices I've actually tested on this channel, this is the one device that likely most people have used because it's just so commonplace or another type of zebra device most likely so i will leave that conclusion up to you folks but i think it's fairly good and i would say if someone dropped it with the exoskeleton on there it wouldn't harm it at all it would just be like yep i was dropped that's okay i'm still alive i've always known that sort of the motorola symbol zebra devices have always been pretty bulletproof because of what industry they're made for still torn if i want to use this for inventory or use the other one for inventory i don't know I kind of like both. I like both of them. I do love the look of this, but I do love the look of the center with the grip. Let's go ahead and investigate this thing. Let's tear it apart. I still can't believe this, this port. <laughs> Such a silly thing, but okay. There's some T6 screws holding it together. I have a feeling these little pieces come up to reveal more screws and they do. Why am I using this screwdriver? Even the screws have little green rubber gaskets around them kind of interesting. I know I could have done a drop test on this, but I'm 100% fine with saying these would withstand impacts and I could leave them in water and submerge them and they'd be fine. They wouldn't be an issue. Okay. Oh, alrighty then. Oh, hopefully the screen doesn't come off. Oh no, it shouldn't. It shouldn't do. It shouldn't do. It's all right. It's all right. I'm thinking out loud. There's a the rear camera just there. No OIS. I have a slight feeling that the screen comes off first. It is. Ah, well, I am at a bit of a standstill because the way they have made this IP67 certified is that the screen is completely fused and that needs to come off. And I have a feeling trying to get this off in one piece, that's not gonna happen at all. I'll actually link a video in the description of someone tearing it down and showing the underside. And there is some pieces of copper over the processor and stuff. There's like a little bay for an expansion card. It's probably for um, phone functionality or something like that. But yeah, that's the only way that this thing is gonna come apart is like that and this bottom piece as well won't come off because there's screws underneath the screen that hold this together so i can't even get a good look at that speaker that's a bit unfortunate okay so there's just a capacitor just dangling there and then if i lift that out okay so this is the scanning mechanism just here i guess this is the most important part we want to take a look at but that has some goop on there to protect from any water getting in. But yeah, that's got the headphone jack connected to it. And then inside the earpiece is at the top there. So there you go, there is one. I just don't trust myself with trying to pull out the screen. I don't want to break one of these units. There's a vibration motor though, which did work. So yep, the flex ribbon just for this little connector, which I may as well just pop that back on. Sad that I wasn't able to tear this down completely, but I just don't want to risk it. I'm sorry. I love taking apart devices. I don't want to make that sacrifice. And this is another reason why I don't test rugged devices because when it gets to something like this where I can't take it apart unless I basically destroy it, it's kind of the pickle I'm in. Okay, well, I've put it back together and the barcode scanning still works. So that was the only little bit I could disassemble. Very sorry about that, but I just don't want to risk it. Well, I guess that's everything that I wanted to have a look at on this device. I wasn't too sure how it would come apart and, well, I know now. Screen first, which, uh, that's not happening. Now I've got to work out if I want to use this for inventory or that for inventory. Still haven't worked out. This would probably be a little bit more secure and a little bit more reliable than the other one. But I'll see how I go. I'll work it out, but I'll put the port cover back on. The port cover that's worth more than both of these devices combined that I paid. 
So there you go. Well, that's it, folks. You've made it to the end of this little mini series of looking at barcode scanners, industrial devices, devices that aren't meant to be used for normal use. Done. And those videos have been carted up the top the entire time. So if you needed to watch those first, just to sort of get an idea of what's going on, then that's cool. Yeah, I've just been meaning to take a look at these devices at some point on the channel. And then when I got the Sunmi device, I already had the center PDAs. And then it was like, well, then I've also got this. And then luckily I looked up the OS upgrade. So then I was able to put play services on it and make this whole complete little trilogy thing. So yeah, I hope you did enjoy this for what it was. I know this one wasn't super in depth, but I got to demonstrate what this device is capable of outside of a business setting. So if you made it to the end of this video, thank you very much for sticking around and watching. If you had to use a timestamp, so that is completely fine. That's why they're there. That's why they're integrated. So you can skip past segments that go too long or bits that you're just not really into. If you're here to see one thing or another, that's completely fine. And as well as using Adblock, once again, that's also fine if you need to use that completely understandable. One little side note, this thing is a TC55, but the one I looked at was a TC51. That makes sense, doesn't it? And yeah, as I said during the review, let me know what you think of this device, if you use it on a daily basis and how it performs and stuff for you, but it should get the job done, I'd say. But anyways, folks, uh, currently I am on my break. I'm filming before my break, but I'm gonna be editing this during my break to get it out during my break. So it's not really a break. It is a break, kind of. I'm preparing for the break. Don't worry, it doesn't make sense, but it makes sense to me. As for the next video, I'm not quite too sure on what that'll be. I have accepted a bunch of sample stuff to review. So I've got a bunch of stuff coming my way from a couple of companies. So I want to take a look at them. That may not be for everyone, but I just accepted them because I honestly will probably use the products in day-to-day -day usage. So yeah, if that's your thing, then stick around for it. But otherwise, until the next time I see you all, please take care, stay safe, and be good people. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video and the mini series. Tell you what, I think I should look at this next. This should be something I should look at because this is something cool. Uh, this is the Chin F22 Pro that I got for 70 bucks. Absolute steal. So maybe I'll review this next. So there we go. But until that next one, please take care and I'll see you all very soon. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.